Howdy, it's Kyle talking about the best rural areas in each state. Every state has areas that would be classified as rural, but not all are created equal. There's been a lot of economic and population decline throughout a lot of rural America, but it isn't all negative. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at the best rural area that each state has to offer. For criteria, I'm looking at counties that are not economically depressed and are not even exurban to a metro area, just standalone counties that are rural. But I'm also looking at areas that accurately reflect the surrounding culture without huge outside influences or over tourism. So let's take a look at the best rural areas in each state. Starting with Wyoming, the north central part of the state is my pick. This is primarily Bighorn County. This is where you get east of the orbit of the tourism zone of Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. So once you get east of that area, you're still in a very pretty area, but you do have more of an authentic Wyoming feel to it. For Wisconsin, I have to go with the Door Peninsula, which is in the eastern portion of the state jutting out into Lake Michigan. This is Door County and Kewanee County, I believe is how it's pronounced. The bay on the north and west side is Green Bay. Many areas like this in other states might have giant mansions where rich people go on the weekends. With the exception of the upscale small town of Whitefish Bay, this whole area just felt like it was more for the regular people. Rural, nice, and West Virginia aren't often words put in the same sentence, but there are a couple of parts of the state that are really nice and quite rural. My favorite is in the northeastern portion of the state around Randolph County, centered around the towns of Thomas and Davis. These are small towns that have seen some small business investment in the past several years. You do have some tourism in the area with the Canaan Valley Ski Resort. And whereas most small towns in West Virginia feel like they're on their way out, Davis and Thomas feel like they're up and coming. For Washington, I'm looking way in the northwestern corner of the state, the San Juan Islands. There are many islands in the Salish Sea. Most are part of the U.S., some are part of Canada. And for the ones that are part of Washington, most of these are only accessible by ferry. Only a couple have a road going to it. And this is just really chill, laid-back, genuine coastal Washington. But this area isn't completely off the beaten path. There are many vacation homes there, and there are a couple of pins for this area on the viewer pin map. Similar to Wisconsin and Washington, I'm picking a part of Virginia that is way off in the corner of the state. And in this case, the eastern shore. If you look at a map without the state lines, you might think this is part of Maryland. However, these two counties over here are part of Virginia. The only way you would really be going through here is if you're driving through the Chesapeake Bay Tunnel area from Virginia Beach up into Ocean City, Maryland. It's very rural, very laid back, very historic. And there aren't many stretches like this along the Atlantic coast where you have this little development. Vermont. I could have basically just picked the entire state. But for this, I'm going to pick a rural spot within a rural state, kind of in the north central part of the state. This is east of Burlington and west northwest of the capital, Montpelier. These are some of the higher elevations of the Green Mountains. And just a lot of really cool, cute little towns in this area. Utah is another state where I'm picking a part that is a corner of the state. In this case, the northeastern corner of the state, Uinta and Daggett counties. This is centered around the towns of Vernal and Naples, as well as the Flaming Gorge area and the town of Dutch John. This area can be kind of touristy, but it's nothing like Moab, which is a much bigger town and feels much bigger with so many more tourists there. Texas, a big state with a lot of rural areas. The area that I'm choosing for best rural part of the state is Hill Country, which is primarily west of Austin and west and northwest of San Antonio. What is considered hill country is often up for debate amongst Texans themselves, but it's generally this area. The main town there is Fredericksburg, but there are also many other really cool small towns. My favorite is the town of San Saba, which is at the far northern end of hill country. Small town, nice cute little downtown. And these towns are just far enough from Austin or San Antonio to be close enough to go to those, but be far enough to not be influenced by them in terms of exurban development. But with that being said, there is a lot of Texas money moving out to hill country. For Tennessee, the part of the state that I'm choosing for this is the area just north of where I live in Chattanooga. If you draw a triangle between Nashville, Knoxville, and Chattanooga, I'm talking about the area right in the middle of all that. This is the Cumberland Plateau, and it's lightly populated there. So these towns remained small throughout the years, and because they're far enough away from the big cities of the state, they've maintained their rural charm. 
For South Dakota, I'm looking in the northeastern portion of the state along the Minnesota and North Dakota borders. This area is flanked by the two big cities of the region, Aberdeen to the west and Watertown to the south. When you think of South Dakota, you might think of the Black Hills and the Badlands first, or maybe the largest city of Sioux Falls. But this northeastern portion of the state is quite nice. South Carolina is one of many states where most of the rural areas are pretty poor. I've traveled all throughout the entire state extensively, and my pick for this video is the south centralist part of the state around Hampton, Colleton, and Jasper counties. And even though two of these counties look coastal, the parts of those counties that jut down into the coast is really more swampy than beach. So it's not quite the hoity-toity city folks of Charleston or Savannah, but it is still pretty nice. Rhode Island, very small state, most of it urban. There really isn't much in the state that can be called rural. By default, what I'm choosing for this video kind of has to be this west central part of the state. But with that being said, it is pretty nice. Some small towns, some wooded areas. But even in this area, you're only about 15 minutes from the Providence suburbs and only about 20 minutes to downtown. For Pennsylvania, there is a noticeable difference between the rural areas in the western and eastern part of the state, which might be why I picked the south central part of the state as the best rural area. This is centered around the towns of Chambersburg, Shippensburg, and Gettysburg. But because you have these small towns all fairly close to each other, they each have a little distinct feel from each other, and it just gives the overall rural area here a very pleasant feel. For Oregon, my choice is simply the entire coast. In Oregon, all beaches are public and there's no big development anywhere along the coast there. There are no big towns and there are a handful of medium-sized towns on some of the inlets, but it's really just one long, gorgeous coast of small towns and rural areas. You really can't go wrong wherever you pick along the coast here. Some towns are a little more upscale and resort-oriented. Some are a little more blue-collar oriented, but they're all nice. Oklahoma is another state where most of the rural areas are fairly poor, but that doesn't mean that all of rural Oklahoma is bad. The area I'm choosing for this video is the east central part of the state. This is east of the Tulsa metro area, east of Muskogee, and kind of southwest of the northwest Arkansas metro area. There's also been some growth in the Tulsa area, and that rural area in the middle of all that has seen some economic bolstering from that through the years. For Ohio, I picked a very nondescript part of the state, this part. How do you describe it? Well, south of Toledo and Sandusky, north of Columbus, east of Lima, west of Mansfield. Nothing flashy, just nice laid-back rural Midwest. And you could even get pretty close to the Lake Erie Lakeshore and still be fairly rural. If you want wonderfully boring and indistinguishable rural America, and I mean that in a positive way, check out this part of Ohio. North Dakota, another state where I'm picking a corner. I really like the northeastern corner of the state along the Minnesota and Canadian borders. And you're really off the beaten path up around here. North Dakota is already the least visited state in the country. And with the exception of the I-29 corridor, no one goes to this part of the state. And because of lack of outside influence and being right there on the Canadian border, you have quite an interesting cultural mix here. For North Carolina, I definitely had to go with the far western end of the state in the mountains. This is west of Asheville and south of Great Smoky Mountains National Park. There are several counties there. They are all lightly populated. They all have very few tourists, with most of the visitors staying on the Tennessee side or going over to Asheville. So this area, you have a lot of Appalachian wilderness and not a lot of tourists. So like many other places on this list, a lot of small towns, really chill, laid back and just a really authentic feel of what this area is like. When most people think of New York, they're probably going to think of New York City, but there are a lot of really nice rural areas in the state as well. For this video, I'm picking the Finger Lakes region. If you look at the satellite map, you can really see the Finger Lakes and how they got their name. And this is just a really nice, quiet area. A lot of folks from the city do have vacation homes up here. So there are some towns in the area that feel a little more touristy, a little more city-like. But it isn't that difficult to get away from that stuff and find some real rural New York. Ah, uh, New Mexico. A lot of the state is very rural, and my favorite part is that north-central part of the state. This is the highest elevations of the state up into the Rocky Mountains. And this is that part of the state where you have that unique Spanish culture. But this area is just a really nice region. It's most well known for the town of Taos. 
This area is a prime area for wildfires, so if you do live in this area, you do have to be careful with fire breaks and defensible space. But like just about everywhere else on this list, it's quiet, it's laid back, and it's really nice. Well, New Jersey, there are only two parts of the state that can be called rural, the northwestern corner and the southwestern corner. So for this, I'm going with the southwestern corner. This area is along the Delaware Bay and you can see across the river into Delaware. This is another coastal area that has few people and largely because there aren't really any beaches there. It's mostly swamp and wetlands. So this is just a really nice peaceful corner of a state that has a ton of people in a small area. For New Hampshire, all but the southeastern quadrant of the state is rural. But my favorite part is the east central part of the state, what they call the Lake District or the Lake Region. To the north of this area is where you have the presidential wilderness and the highest elevations in New England. And as the region's name implies, a lot of lakes. So this is a really nice area that can have bumper to bumper traffic on weekends on the main highways. But once you get to the tourist off season, it's going to be beautiful and quiet and you have it all to yourself. Ah, Nevada. Not going to lie, there really isn't any part of rural Nevada that I can call really nice. It's a very rough and tumble state, but that's part of its rural charm. But I did have to pick somewhere, and Lake Tahoe area really isn't rural anymore. So I'm going with Lincoln County, which is the county along the Utah border just north of Clark County, which is where Las Vegas is. But in the end, it still is rural Nevada. It's pretty roughneck, but that is what rural Nevada is. Nebraska, one of my favorite rural parts of the entire country is western Nebraska. Now, Scotts Bluff is a huge city compared to the other places I mentioned on this list. There are almost 30,000 people in the Scotts Bluff area. But with nothing being around there for well over an hour radius, it does still feel very rural. But to me, western Nebraska is what rural America is all about. Little tiny towns, not near much of anything else. Although the population is going down in most of these counties, there really isn't any kind of economic growth going on around here, but it is still some very nice scenery, laid back towns, really cool people, and just a great spot to live. And to finish off part one of best rural areas is Montana. I would say the northwestern corner of the state is the best rural area of the state, but it's become a really popular spot for people with a lot of money to buy up a lot of vacation homes. So I'm going with the area along the Idaho border, but south of I-90. And this is still some real rural roughneck Montana. So if you want to get away from all the hipsters and the lattes in the northwestern part of the state or around Bozeman, check out the southwestern portion of the state. Despite the complaints of all these people moving to Montana, it's still a mostly empty state and there's plenty of wonderful wilderness and great rural areas all throughout the state. So that's my look at the best rural areas in each state. And despite the sued saying that the end is nigh for rural America, we're all dying. The cities are taking us over. That's just not the case. There are plenty of areas in this country that are really nice to live, quiet, peaceful areas out in the rural parts. In order to keep this video from going on too long, I split it up into two parts. So check the description box below for the link to part two. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning stuff like this. I'm doing nerdy stuff about geography and everything comes from a nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Clinton from Farmington, Missouri. If you're interested in buying a pin for the viewer pin map or just to support the channel, check out my Patreon page, link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.